hazard us to make to pay the penalty so a poor society is uh, don't do this practice. Uh, next stage right. A com company officials right is make a profit and customer is fair <coughs> payment. Major right is speak speaking based on their ethical principle. So options are uh, divided to two options. Uh, first is apply practice or don't apply practice. So our argument is don't apply the practice. If they apply the practice, <coughs> customer cope with late penalties that they don't need to pay. So customers can can't get higher higher eventually. Customer don't want to use the card anymore. Uh, anymore than. Companies profit get smaller than major and official salary also decrease. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is a, clear, a little bit clearer, right? They shouldn't use that kind of program, right? Then uh, scenario C. Which group is doing scenario C? Stakeholders and the claims, anyway, we'll get an idea. You are the sales uh, manager for a local radio station. So don't you don't have to read it. Yes. Just tell us. So, so no, okay. Yes. Sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, one of uh, uh, our biggest advertisers has been my, my team or Tate. Or, or Tate. Yeah. And uh, Tom Tyler promising to save our friends lots of cash. Uh, in these commercials, Tyler claims that his company offers the lowest mortgage rate and will pay pay to have home appraised. Up, up <laughs> up uh, it, it had a variety of unethical and illegal practices. Uh, after uh, temporarily pulling his uh, advertise, uh, Tom Tyler won, wants to go back on on my stations on uh, airwaves with a new set of commercials. The question is, <coughs> uh, would you broadcast the new new commercials for Mighty Mortage? Uh, stakeholders are uh, high. Uh, mighty mortgage and radio station, uh, society and uh, invest investigators, and their claims. Uh, my, mighty mighty mortgage. Run, uh, they want to run the business and advertise and <coughs> earn the money. But radio station and society and investigators want to return money to people and stop commercials. Uh, for society, uh, it is better to return money to people. And but uh, if we over or uh, advertise, uh, we will get profit, and then we will we can welfare for society. 
uh, <coughs> right is uh, they have have a right to earn and save money stably. And there is uh, there are options. Uh, first one is return money, and second one advertise. Uh, our argument is uh, return money, but run a run an advertisement because they changed their mind, so we cannot advertise. So can you explain the reason? What's the moral philosophy? You said they changed their mind, so oh, yeah. you can, <coughs> you're going to allow them to advertise. So what's your moral philosophy for allowing that? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, they mentioned about they do they will not no longer uh, free of free free souls. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. They change their mind, so we can run other price. Uh, she wants to say that the part of the deal which was illegal uh, was changed in the advertisement. <coughs> okay, so they, you mean they took responsibility and they apologized? Did they apologize or did they take some action to solve the problem? No, but we said that they should take an action and then they can. Uh, Okay, so they take <coughs> responsibility. Okay, so they take responsibility and they take some action. And in your moral philosophy, if they do that, it's okay. Then they. Because the new commercial is not uh, and they need to money. Okay. All right. So thank you. And then the scenario E of the golf club. <laughs> uh, our topic is Augusta National Pop Club. Uh, Augusta National Pop Club is US Master. Augusta Group Club, uh, International Group Club, Scott uh, IBM Company. Uh, nowadays, uh, IBM Company delegate uh, uh, you CEO, uh, Rometi. Uh, uh, Rometi is female, uh, but Augusta National Group Club, traditional, uh, not a uh, a female member. Uh, stockholder is Augusta, Augusta, uh, Augusta National Group Club and the IBM CEO and society. Uh, Augusta National Group Club claim uh, uh, Follow sub subscription a man only. Uh, IBM CEO uh, stopping the sport. The society, uh, the joy should be possible regardless of gender. Uh, option first, although we want to join, then sponsor and seek the other sponsor. Uh, second, Following the subscription of female members. Uh, right, uh, Augusta Group Club is no reason for prevent to join club the women. Uh, we are conclusion in <coughs> um, because of No reason. Uh, Augusta, group, Augusta Group Club allow, allow the female member. So, can you say again what's your decision? Uh, Augusta Group Club uh, allow, allow the female member.
So you think they should allow the female member? Yes. So you mean that the decision is IBM is going to sponsor them or not sponsor them? Sponsor. Uh, <coughs> so they told IBM CEO, who's a lady, that she yeah. can't join the club, although normally the CEO can join the club, yeah. right? But because she's a woman, she can't join the club. So she has to decide, is she going to sponsor the, the sports event or not at their golf club? So, so, so you are the woman CEO. Yeah. Are you going to sponsor the event or not? Uh, if I is the golf club, uh, don't, don't allow women to yes. uh, stop the sponsor. You're going to stop the sponsorship? Yeah. Okay, so why? Because the IBM CEO is female. Mm -hmm. uh, she CEO is company owner. They shouldn't discriminate against the women, and it's better for society. The women can join yeah. the course too, so you won't sponsor them. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so uh, group scenario C. Mercy mean? Mercy is um, help other people. Yes. Yes. Have mercy on other people, right? Even though they are in a weaker position, you can help them, right? Yeah. So the mercy rule was that you could help them, mm -hmm. but you decided that you were just going to continue to try hard mm -hmm. without helping the weaker team. Thank you. different options about the law, checking what other companies do, other ethical companies do, and so on. So if we do that, we can make an argument. Our argument should be based 
on some moral reasoning. We, you studied a little bit about moral philosophy. If you want to develop your moral philosophy further, you can read more about philosophy and so on. Okay, Take an online course on that area. And uh, <clears throat> then we have to make the argument so we can convince people that it's the correct thing to do. Okay? So we, if we properly check the rights and obligations and we properly check what's good for society, then we should be able to make a decision, ethical decision. Do you have any questions about that ethical decision making? Yes? That's the thing, you have to decide, you have to decide that. So you're asking me, which is more important, rights or society? Is that your question? Well, uh, you, that's the point. Most of the ethical dilemmas is that there is a conflict between rights and what's better for society. Like the very simple example of pushing a fat man off the bridge. <laughs> for society, it's better to push him off the bridge because you save five lives, right? But for rights, it's, it's against the rights. For rights, it's better not to push him off the bridge because that's murder, that's a wrong thing to do. He has the right to life, right? So we have to weigh up, weigh up the benefit to society against the rights, which is stronger. What did you decide to do in the case of the fat man? Push them. Decide to push the man. So in that case, you decided the benefit for society. Saving five lives was more important than his right to life. But other people decided that his right to life, <coughs> or not to commit murder, was more important than saving five lives. You don't agree with them, but you have your argument about why your decision was correct. And they have their argument about why their decision was correct. Can I say that you're right and you're wrong? No, right? Different people have different moral philosophies. But we need, the point is that we need to have a logical moral philosophy to support our, our decision. Okay. Any, more, any more questions? Do you think you could make an ethical decision now? Yeah. In the business? No? can do those that, that kind of way. Yes? Okay, hopefully you're working in the business with the good ethical culture that supports you to make the right uh, ethical decisions. So, so far in the course then we talked about uh, creating, uh, we talked about rights and obligations, we talked about stakeholder management, okay? We talked about uh, creating an ethical program for a company, how to create an ethical program for a company. We talked about crisis management, ethical crises, and we talked about the ethical decision making or ethical dilemmas. Okay? So, we already spoke about how to make an ethical program for the company, but in this part of the course, the second part, we're going to take a wider view. Okay? We're going to talk about things like CSR and sustainability and corporate governance and international law and businesses and human rights and that kind of thing. Okay? So we're going to uh, just move wider. Okay? So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, <coughs> corporate governance. So corporate governance is a way of uh, <coughs> how the company, the managers in the company, are supervised to make sure they're doing the right thing. How are the employees in, this, in the company checked or supervised to make sure that they are doing the right thing? So, we are going to discuss uh, the developments in Anglo-American corporate governance since the 90s. Uh, in the world we have different <coughs> systems of law. And we also have different systems of corporate governance. 
Well, do you know this word, Anglo-American? We have a, a lot of things are different. Anglo-American. Anglo means English. Angle, angle, angles were people, I think they came from Denmark, right? In the 7th century or something like that to the UK. So this, when you see this word, they're talking about the UK. Anglo-Saxon, right? Were people who used to live in the UK. And uh, Anglo-American is UK, used to be in the UK Empire, like Ireland, Australia, Canada, English, usually English-speaking countries, India, and the US, right? So they have one system of corporate governance. But Japan, Germany have different systems. Okay, France, like a law in the mainland Europe, they use a different law. Like Korea, you use a different type of law, civil law, based on codes more so. In the UK and the US, they use common law, or Australia. Common law is based on what did people used to do? What was the last case decided? What are people's traditions, okay? What did the judge decide 20 years ago? Let's follow what the judge decided before. So common law is more based on what's the practice, applying the past cases to the current case, whereas civil law is more based on a list of rules. So we, we can see there's a di also different corporate governance between Anglo-American and other countries. Which one is better? Which one is better, German or Japanese or American or English? Can we say that this one is better than the other one? No. no. Right? Just they're different systems, okay? Uh, so, <laughs> I guess that the more widely used one is uh, Anglo-American, right? And we know that already that the US, if you look at the world's top 500 companies, how many of them are from the US, right? <coughs> um, a lot of them are from the US or English-speaking countries. So, <laughs> then we're going to look at some international standards for corporate responsibility and accounting. And we're going to discuss accounting in relation to bribery and corruption. So most big organizations, they are uh, public companies. What does it mean to be a public company? Public versus private. Yes, public is they have stockholders. Anybody can buy. Public means anybody, right? Public, uh, anybody can buy the stock, own a part of the company, right? <coughs> what is one of the biggest companies in the world? Google. Say Google, right? Did you know that you can own a part of Google, right? You can pretend you have so many employees working for you in Google every day, right? <laughs> You buy just one stock, you can wake up in the morning. Oh, 40,000 people are working for me again today. I hope they're working hard, right? So you're a part owner of Google. Do you want to be an owner, a part owner of Google? No. No? Do you think the stock price will go down? It's a cultural difference. When I was in the US, almost all of my co-workers owned stocks in companies like Google or Yahoo or Apple. And I guess if you check the Google stock price when I was in the US, it was 2009. Maybe it's gone up 50 or 100% since that time, right? So they invest in some company like that uh, in the US. Perhaps more common. In Korea, you have uh, also many public companies like Samsung and so on. You can buy the stock. But you also have in emerging economies, they tend to have a lot of family-run businesses. Family-run business might not be a public company might be a little bit different. Owned privately by the family, they don't sell the stock to the public. Okay? But they are still going to need some, somebody to help them watch the managers. Even if it's a family-run company, they, they might be uh, just doing something else or have a different job. So they need to appoint somebody to check the managers are doing their job right. Okay? So organizations are run by managers, not by shareholders. So you, you're not going to run Google. You own a part of Google, but you're not going to run it. So corporate governance is a system that the owners put in place to monitor. Do you understand monitor? Yes. Baby monitor, you put in the room to listen to, you can hear the baby crying, right? 
the managers and ensure that the organization's obligations are met. So there's more attention on corporate governance because of scandals we looked at Enron in the first week. So the board, if they had somebody checking the managers better, it might have uh, been better. And also, government companies and public-private partnerships. Public-private partnerships is uh, also including the government and some private company. They, the government also needs somebody to check that their uh, departments are being run properly. So we have this effect called the agency effect. This assumes that people are untrustworthy. Managers have a duty to work for the owner's benefit. Managers have control over information and can use this for their own benefit. So we can see that uh, there was a scandal after the financial crisis that the CEOs of the banks are getting some big bonuses, right? I talked about PIMCO and bonuses of $280 million for just one year, okay? For, uh, split between 11 people, right? So they all get a lot, millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars each as a bonus for one year. So this is a simple example, right? Who is deciding whether they get this pay or not? Right? If I decide my own pay, am I going to make a very high payment yes. or a fair payment? I what do you think? I... So then you agree with the agency effect. You think people are untrustworthy generally, so they need somebody to check them, right? That they're not, they're not doing that things, those kind of things, right? So even if we say that people are, not all people are untrustworthy, some people are untrustworthy. So we need to check. We need to monitor and we need to check uh, them to stop this kind of conflict of inf inf uh, influence. So if a large corporation fails, it can harm society. So RBS Bank in the UK fails, so the government had to pay a lot of money to save the bank. So this money is added on to the debt of the country. Ireland was even worse situation. They, their debt to GDP was 40%, now it's 110%. So Ireland more than doubled its debt by bailing out the banks, which failed in Ireland. Okay? So the UK was similar, and the US government also bailed out AIG in the financial crisis. So we can see that nowadays people's pension is being cut or the government worker's salary is being cut. Society is affected when the large companies fail. Not just the stockholders, also the workers and so on. So we need to make sure that the company, the managers, are doing the right, doing the right thing. So uh, we can have di different types of leaders. Somebody did some research. Do you understand psychopath? Yes. Are you a psychopath? No. Mm. Psychopath means you have no conscience, empathy, or concern for others. Okay? You will do anything because you don't care about other people. Maybe Hitler was a psychopath, right? He was just killing a lot of people. His dream was to kill all the <coughs> Russian people and take Russia as land for settling German people, right? So he didn't have any conscience, empathy, or concern for the people in Russia, okay? Or, uh, so there are people out there who are psychopaths, but they did some research, they found that up to 20% of CEOs are psychopaths. That this is one way of getting to the top, is not caring about other people's feelings or, uh, having any empathy for other people, right? Do you remember the phrase in uh, the video we saw about Enron? That they said they would stand on your neck, stand on somebody's neck, right? Yes. To get to the top, okay? So if they have to sta stamp on necks, stand on other people, then they'll do that, they said. Right, that kind of culture. But the good news is 80% of CEOs have positive organizational ethics, right? According to this study. So, if we have, what, this is another reason for corporate governance. If we have a psychopath who's the CEO of our company, or leader, <coughs> um, 
we've already seen what happens when psychopaths are in power without any controls, right? With Hitler, it's a dangerous situation. So, uh, if we have some control over them, then it's, it's better, right? And we can improve our performance, the organizational performance overall, by having more people, more skilled people there to supervise. So, uh, let's take a break now for 10 minutes. If you have any question about your midterm or you want to know your score about the presentation, you can ask me.